Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another video for you and this one's going to be tailored towards our beginners out there. Uh, we've got a lot of new folks in the gun world and folks are really confused about things that they're purchasing, going out and spending their money on, and, uh, and also the items that they're using to protect themselves. And one of the questions that we get a lot is, what is the difference between an FMJ or ball round and a hollow point round uh, for personal protection? Okay, um, what do these things mean? What does this terminology mean? So I hope that this video, we can sort of get to the point here and show you guys what we're talking about. Uh, you know, because a lot of people are going in gun stores and you see a box of like $12 ammo and you get 50 rounds for like 12 bucks, you know, say you bought a nine millimeter, and you're like, wow, 50 rounds, whatever. And then a guy at a gun store shows you a box of hollow points, right? And, uh, and you see that it's like 25 or 30 bucks for 25 rounds. So it's like, of course, the consumer level uh, that we're at, you know, we're consumers, we think, oh, well, I got more for less. And you don't necessarily know the difference between the two. So I'll quickly sort of explain it. And then as we get off of those basics, we'll segue into uh, a little bit more for those of you that might be interested that want to dive a little deeper down the rabbit hole. So an FMJ essentially means full metal jacket. All right, you have a lead core that is encapsulated in a uh, copper jacket, okay? FMJ ammo is really intended for punching paper, for practice, uh, and everything like that. It's not really intended for defensive purposes. Uh, now, that's not to say that a full metal jacket round is not deadly. It will still hurt you, obviously, and you need to treat a full metal jacket round, obviously, uh, with every degree of safety as you would any other round. It is still deadly. Uh, don't think that it won't hurt someone uh, if they're shot with an FMJ. Uh, but FMJs typically don't expand, okay? So they will have straight line penetration through the target. Um, they're just going to penetrate, and that's generally about what they'll do if they're shot into any form of medium other than trying to punch paper, okay? So FMJ will tend to penetrate and carry its energy right on through. Um, the penetration in some circles may not necessarily be something that people view as a desirable trait, but depending on the round that you're using an FMJ, like in this case, we've got some 30 carbine ammo. Uh, now, there are handguns chambered in 30 carbine, but this is typically uh, the cartridge at the M1 carbine fires. And the military 30 carbine round is an FMJ round. Um, the military has issued ball ammo, uh, no problem, right? Uh, many militaries around the world use ball ammo. Um, so it's not necessarily something that, you know, isn't functional, right? but it's typically a practice type of round. Uh, the 30 carbine in gel still provides some pretty decent cavitation of the bullet as it enters the medium. It's still not something you wanna be standing in front of, especially at close range out of an M1 carbine. However, there are many other bullet technologies that can really increase the overall power and lethal, not really power, but the lethality of the bullet, bullet for bullet. So that's when you get into what we would call hollow point ammunition. So your defensive stuff can fall into some varying categories, which we're going to sort of go over a few. But the most common type of projectile that you're going to find is going to be just like a good old uh, bonded hollow point projectile. Okay, so it still has a copper jacket, uh, but you have an exposed lead core. Okay. And what happens is as this projectile goes into a fleshy medium, it forces the projectile to expand and open in a very controlled and engineered manner. Okay, it's not just chaos, right? Uh, that's why when you look at a expanded projectile, you see that it almost looks like a little flower. Okay, that's because this lead core in many, many projectile designs, especially your good quality uh, projectile designs, is usually going to be what they call bonded. So if the core is bonded to the, pro the, the actual jacket material, the projectile, it makes sure that that whole arrangement stays as homogenous and retains as much weight as possible. But what you get with the hollow point is that it actually expands and it increases the diameter of the projectile and causes a larger wound cavity. But it's not just the fact that the projectile is larger physically, it is what is causing disruption as the projectile is entering the fleshy medium. The physical 
and visceral expansion of the projectile, the act of the projectile expanding is also causing cavitation within the intended target. And uh, you have a couple of different forms of cavitation. Uh, you have a, a temporal cavity and a permanent cavity. The permanent cavity, when you look at gel, is the physical track left over from the projectile. This is the, the wound you see. Okay, the temporal cavity is when you look at the projectile entering a fleshy medium under slow motion, you can see this temporary uh, cavity called the temporal cavity. And that temporal cavity is larger when you go with a hollow point and a good expanding projectile over a ball round. The temporal cavity on a ball round is going to be smaller. It's still deadly. It's still not something you want to be a part of. But to, you'll get more disruption in terms of a temporal cavity out of a hollow point than you will a ball, project, or ball projectile. Now, why does that matter? Okay, why is it important? With proper shot placement, if a shot enters the body of, a, of an organism, if it's an animal, human, whatever, an animal, uh, it, it has a tendency to disrupt our organs, right? So the larger that temporal cavity is on that projectile, the more chances those organs are going to be disrupted in a way that causes them to shut down or die or causes you to physically die quicker, okay? If that temporal cavity opens up and, all, and that, the, the shock of that expansion, it can be deadly as well. So the larger that, that expansion is and the more of that kind of temporal balloon that you get within the medium, uh, that is what does the killing just as much as the physical wound track of the projectile. Uh, we've done a lot of ammo testing over the years and this is the most basic way I can really just explain what happens when bullets hit things, right? And it's not meant to be a scientific explanation, it's just the explanation I can provide through lots of observations with high-speed cameras. We've done lots of testing. That's kind of the basic Ball ammo uh, just punches through, good for practice, shooting paper. You still don't want to be standing in front of it. Hollow point ammo expands, has much more cavitation as it enters the body, and has a much higher chance of delivering a lethal wound, be it a foe or be it a, a deer or whatever, okay? An animal you're trying to kill. Okay, so that's the real, real basics, okay? Um, now, ho uh, hollow point or defensive ammunition can also fall in to a couple of different uh, types of ammo that we can discuss here while we have the camera running as well. Okay, so now you understand just the super basics. I mean, there are a lot of different brands of hollow point ammo and they all act a little bit differently depending on the jacket thickness, um, you know, the softness of the core, you know, how soft the lead is, whether or not it's a bonded projectile. All of these things can determine how these projectiles act how much powder is in the case, all these things, whether or not the round is a plus P, whether or not it's a standard pressure round. These are all terminology things that you understand as you get more into this. Um, and then how much the bullet weighs, right? A lighter bullet's gonna be moving faster, okay? Uh, if I take a 147 grain hollow point and I compare it to a 115 grain hollow point, the 147 is probably going to expand a little slower. It may penetrate a little deeper because it has more mass. The lighter bullet probably open up a little bit sooner, may not penetrate as deeply. So these are all things to consider, right? Bullet weights have a lot to do with how they act. The velocity of the bullet has a lot to do with how it's going to act, how soon, and the construction of the bullet matters. So what if we look at a, um, a lead core projectile, like what they call a soft point, okay? So we've got a full metal jacket, we've got a hollow point, which come in a lot of different flavors, well, and I'll discuss a few of those in a second, but what about a lead nose bullet? All right, so a lead nose bullet acts a little bit differently. What it does is, in this case, we've got a 44 Magnum revolver round. Now this one does have a hollow point, but a lot of rifle rounds, and even like the little M1 carbine, will just have a soft point with no cavity on there. And what it relies on is the soft lead. Instead of having a completely encapsulated uh, core uh, with copper all around it like an FMJ would do, we have a partially encapsulated projectile and an exposed lead nose, okay? So our, our gilding surfaces that actually ride in the bore are still copper. 
but then we have an exposed lead core that is usually a relatively soft lead, okay? So what happens is with this, we don't get super, super extreme, um, you know, opening up of the projectile and expansion of the projectile like we do with a hollow point. A hollow point is designed to dump lots of energy quickly and, and quickly cause cavitation within the target the moment that it begins to enter the target, okay? A soft point round is more of a, it's more about the destination and getting there more so than the immediate journey, okay? So the way these act is they're more for penetrating deeper and having a slower and gradual expansion throughout the entire length of the wound channel. So soft point ammo is typically used for deer hunting or for hunting game, where you might need a controlled and slower expansion. You get a little bit more of the penetration of an FMJ round, but but not just the, the penetration of the FMJ round, but not quite the expansion of a traditional hollow point. So a soft point would be used when you need to go through a large animal and you want to make sure that you punch a hole all the way through the animal and get maximum bleeding out of either side of the animal, but that you also want that bullet to expand some as it goes through and retain its weight so you punch all the way through and deliver a humane kill to an animal. So soft points are typically used for hunting purposes and of course there's a bunch of different soft point designs. Now soft points can be used for defensive purposes. Um, you're generally not going to see like a soft point 9mm or, or a 40 cal. I mean most of your defensive ammo for like a handgun or something like that is typically going to be a hollow point of some various technology. The industry standards for hollow points, in my opinion, and, and this is through years of experience, uh, you can't go wrong with a spear gold dot. Uh, they are excellent, okay? Uh, you can't go wrong with the Hornady Critical Defense, uh, uses a FTX projectile. Uh, they are excellent and very barrier blind, which we'll discuss that here in a moment briefly. I don't want this to be like an entire thing, but it's important that people know. Uh, but the Hornady Critical Defense is good, the Spear Gold Dot is good, and I don't have one here to show you, but the um, Federal HST 124 grain plus P is an excellent carry load, and it is one of the industry standards for 9mm defensive ammunition. Uh, so those are things to consider. All right, so then we, we marry a couple of these concepts, okay, by looking at a few other things, okay, with the... FTX projectile on the critical defense, okay, it acts a little bit differently because it actually, it has a hollow point but is actually filled with like a little rubberized ball inside of there, okay. So what happens here is you've already sort of predisposed this, this hollow point to have some form of pressure being pushed against that hollow cavity to open it up. It's not a hollow cavity, it's pre-filled with something. So what this does is make the projectile a little bit more barrier blind. And what that means is if this projectile needs to pass through something before it goes into the assailant, uh, what it does is it ignores that a little bit more whereby some projectile designs could get clogged with material, uh, be it uh, clothing, uh, a coat or something, or maybe drywall. And we've done a lot of testing where we've fired defensive rounds through barriers. And this is getting a little bit more advanced. But for those of you that want to know, if you're interested at this point, you can follow me along with this. But with the barrier blindness, uh, that is one consideration for carry ammo. 99% um, of people are never going to have to worry about, let's just say, a physical barrier such as a wall. But if that's something you want to factor into the equation of your defensive round, you can do that. All right, and then you, you go slightly down a, a little bit different of a rabbit hole and we get into the Powerball. Now this is kind of cool because the Powerball actually has a hardened like plastic ball that is in the hollow point. So it is a hollow point projectile that has a hard plastic ball. I mean, that sucker, it's like a piece of um, polymer or plastic ball that's in there. And the way that this bullet works, it relies on speed. It needs lots and lots of velocity and it usually is a lighter bullet for caliber. So this projectile is gonna be lighter, but it's gonna be moving at higher pressures and way higher speeds. And it relies on that speed to upset 
that ball and push it back into the cavity and provide really, really rapid expansion. Okay, and this projectile in a lot of cases will not penetrate very deeply, but the cavity that it does create and the wound path that it does create and what it shoots is tremendous. Okay, so this is not all of the projectiles that are out there. I mainly just wanted to give hopefully what is a basic view of FMJ versus hollow point. But I feel like it's important that if people are going to get involved in firearms, they need to understand exactly what they're dealing with, okay? Not all ammo is made the same. Not all projectiles are the same. And I know that there's probably a lot of people out there that are saying, I don't give a crap, just give me some ball ammo and I'm going to load the gun, put it on the nightstand and go on with my day and then put the check in the box that I did what I needed to do and now I'm armed. Um, that's a start, okay? I'm not going to fault anybody uh, for wanting to arm themselves and do what they need to do. But I feel that it's important uh, that if you are going to take the defense of your family and your community and, and people around you seriously, uh, you need to make sure that you know the right tools for the job and what certain things are designed to do, how they work, and the advantages and disadvantages that all of the different projectile designs offer, okay? Because they all have their weak and strong points, and all of those uh, different capabilities are going to be suited for whatever task you think you might need. Um, we have a ton of videos on projectile testing and testing different carry rounds. If you want to go check them out, I mean, we've got Underwood videos, Lehigh. Uh, we've tested some of the Norma offerings. I know we've tested Spear and uh, Federal, and we've done everything from rifle rounds, revolver rounds, pistol rounds, subsonic, supersonic, you name it. Okay, so we've got a lot of ammo testing on our channel. And also, another guy that I would suggest you check out, he's a friend of ours, uh, Tommy over at TN Outdoors 9 has some of the best ammo tests on the internet. If you want to learn about specific loads, Tommy does have a lot of individual ammo tests on specific brands and bullet weights of ammo. And he focuses a lot on nine millimeter. I know that nine is a popular caliber. So if those of you, if you don't see something on my channel that's helpful, chances are Tommy probably has something on TN Outdoors 9 that can point you in a really cool direction as well. So. There's lots of great content on YouTube that will help you and can point you in the right direction to make sure you can protect yourselves and your family. So thank you so much for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. And I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our uh, folks that purchased man cans, t-shirts like the one I'm wearing over on Ballistic Inc., as well as you know our Patreon supporters. If you see value in what we do and you wish to support us, those are the most direct ways you can do so. We hope that you learned something today and maybe we uh, provoked a bit of thought and maybe uh, alleviated some of those questions that some of you may have about defensive ammo versus range ammo. And uh, thank you guys very much. Many more videos on the way. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.